I said, well, yeah, so what, you know? Uh, well, back then you were into all these nitty-gritty things, uh, you know, and uh, uh, um, into these molecular science. You know, I didn't think very much in the global sense, except when I realized that they would take, would take someone's license away for advising his patients to take vitamin C. I was pretty distraught. And then I met another fellow... His name was his name is uh, Dr. Owen Swartz. Um, Dr. Dr. Swartz was actually a professor. Can you imagine a professor in McGill University Medical School? And he was basically told by the disciplinary board of the by the medical board to go back for further education. And the reason why was he was one of the first advocates of patients not using synthetic thyroid medication and use natural thyroid medication. Can you believe? This guy was discredited so badly that even today he could not, he cannot practice as a medical doctor. He's totally ostracized. He's just writing books. All right. So anyways, I was pretty disheartened. And, um, and then I talked to Paul. I said, Paul, what am I supposed to do? Go back to China or what? <laughs> So, it's, it's amazing, Paul said, you know, there's this profession called naturopathic medicine. Why don't we try it? So, just like due diligence as a researcher, I did all my homework, I look into the law, I look into what it meant to be a naturopathic doctor in the province of British Columbia, where I was at. Uh, I'm still practicing in BC, in fact, today, and I talked to the law, I said, this is a piece of what? You know, it was ridiculous. The law was so antiquated, and I started visiting all of these so-called naturopathic doctors in town. And the first, you know, some of the guys that I look at, they were doing something really funny, what they call vega testing. You know, I said, what? You can do what with this? This is amazing. And uh, actually, there was even one guy who was uh, just writing the word, for the uh, homeopathic medicine, stick it into a slot and put a uh, obviously a tube of water in front of this little contraption. Push a button and red light goes off, went off. He would say, this is your medicine for the patient. I said, wow, this is amazing. I said, I don't know about this. Wait a minute here. <laughs> so, in fact, what I did was I did some more checking and realized, yes, there's this whole field of biological medicine that one can do. And I can probably utilize some of my know-how in maybe medical, molecular genetics or molecular science somehow in this whole, whole mess. Um, you know, um, even though poor Dr. Kleiner really wanted me to become a good internist. He said, Jim, you, you, you might have what it takes, but you just take, it's just going to take a little bit of guts, you know, because he was trained in the old Vienna school. Uh, he back then he talked about putting patients on a little bit of multiple vitamins as an internist. He talked about uh, personality of diseases. You know how do he he can tell uh, the difference between Crohn's uh, Crohn's disease patient and an ulcerative colitis patient from how they feel by asking certain key questions, uh, which I found was absolutely fascinating, and they were all confirmed by the by the uh, by the scoping. You know, and. Um, he was a great teacher, just absolutely incredible. So, I took this piece of law and I said, gee, I better talk to a few more friends to see what this is all about. You know, something when some of my uh, lawyer friends look at this and said, Jimmy, this is incredible. This law basically gives you an open field. And, 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 and that's why the profession is that way, because it's open, it's up for grabs, you can do anything you want, that's why it's not recognized, even though it's licensed by a provincial law, by a provincial act, yet it's not recognized by anybody, simply because according to this law, you can do anything you want except surgery and anesthesia, and it's precisely what is said in the law, is where licensed as physicians in the province of BC were licensed to diagnose and to treat with natural preparations and medicines and substances and administer them too, that's the amazing thing. And the only thing we're not allowed to do is to do surgery and apply anesthetics. I said, fine, you know, I don't mind at all. So I put my foot down finally 
and then roll into Bastyr. Uh, uh, right now it's called Bastyr University. Back then it was the John Bastyr College of Naturopathic Medicine. Um, and uh, when after I went in, um, I kind of looked at the teacher and said, are you sure you know what you're teaching almost? <laughs> Actually, sadly, I, I challenged him. I gave him a, such a bad time. It was just absolutely incredible. So I basically challenged a lot of the courses, and I crashed through a four-year program in two and a half years. And uh, at first, my mandate was, gee, you know, I'm not going to listen to these yo-yos. I'm just going to get my license, and I'm going to do my thing. So basically, and, and I guess um, uh, uh, it turned out to be almost, almost what I wanted.